Now, in a slight deviation to the uh, the instructions, where it shows the top wing going on on page 28, um, we're actually going to make the uh, the access hatch. Essentially, to make our life a little easier, we have full access when the uh, when the wing is off. Um, so uh, it seems like a good idea. And also, I'm going to show you uh, how to install the 3D printed engine and exhaust parts rather than the standard um, uh, engine and exhaust um, that you normally get in the uh, in the kit so we'll, um, we'll we'll go about that let me gather the parts together and uh, I shall um, I shall show you exactly how it all goes together uh, I have removed because I'm installing the 3d printed parts which include the exhaust I've removed the exhaust graphic from uh, from this part here so I literally just chopped it off at the uh, at the top there um, you actually you could just chop it off there if you wanted to um, but uh, anyhow that's that's where I've removed it don't remove it if you are not fitting the 3d printed exhaust so uh, so there we go um, now this particular part part z14 i now need to score now you've got a score guide with you i'm going to freehand this i can't remember where i put mine um, but uh, i can't even find my ruler got it it had been removed um, not by me I may say somebody else wanted to borrow it, so uh, it was taken. So I'm going to uh, to start scoring this. Um, don't follow me. Follow the uh, the score guide that you uh, you get there, because uh, I'll probably get it a bit wonky. But um, I'll carry on scoring this, and then we'll start putting the whole thing together. So I've put my scores in, and I'm just going to pre-bend them so each one of them gets a look in there we go. So you can see this is quite quite tough material really um, you got to w watch out for the some delicate little ends there but uh, get this all pre-bent it really does help when uh, when gluing it it doesn't want to Ping out too much and uh, fight. So you'll notice with the curve on the on the nose part, there's uh, obviously there's some quite sharp curves at the edges there, and it's sort of flat across the top. It's not just a, a sort of single even arch. Um, so uh, we just need to uh, make sure that that's where it's, it will bend which is fine that's exactly what I've got there with the scores that I've uh, I put in and if I'd used the score guide I could have been confident about that but uh, I am now good so that's how we go now this plastic lattice part sits on the back of this particular part here part Z14 um, and we have a little a few little tabs that um, that stick out and if we can um, position it so that those tabs actually evenly stick out on either side then we're winning um, the other thing that we can do as well is just make sure that the back edge of our plastic part P30 is flush with the back edge of our one millimeter foam part Z14, and I've just noticed there are little uh, tabs sticking out on the back there. So we'll just get rid of those. Just finely tune this part for installation, um, and I'm I'm gluing the uh, the printed side down that way. That's how it would have gone um, should we have had the standard uh, 2d exhaust and that would actually poke through this there's a, a slot in this just there um, that we will be getting rid of uh, to install the 3d part but um, that's um, that's how it goes so what we can do I 
rather install this on a bit of a curve um, because obviously the two the two um, parts will shift slightly as the more you curve them so uh, the least shifting we can get the better so let's just add some glue to the printed side here I'm just going to avoid going onto the tabs that will be sticking out so and then you can crisscross the lattice with a little bead of glue here and there just avoid those tabs Bit of delicate handling here so I can just pop some at the back okay and then pop this down there now the one thing that I didn't do that is actually quite useful is pre-bending the plastic um, that's something that I could have done just to, uh, to help the cause but I think we'll be all right like so just make sure there's actually there should be the sort of a one millimeter line of that um, foam part running all the way down the front there um, and that will over that will pop onto our uh, our nose part there so just get that positioned nicely and then we'll just let that glue dry for now just try and put a little bit more of a curve into it there we go fantastic so Whilst that is drying, all of the parts there, um, what we'll do is get our 3D parts and uh, start the painting process. So I've gathered my painting equipment, which is rather sparse, and uh, I've also got the um, engine part here ready for uh, for receiving paint plus the uh, the little um, exhaust end as well so we can start painting and I'm going to give everything just a base coat of black to start off with so this is just a, my uh, acrylic there is some left good <laughs> just a not, not a great deal but um, Hopefully enough there we go. to do what we need to do. So just wet the brush a little. And then let's just start with the exhaust port. So I'm just actually going to put some black inside the exhaust port. Because obviously the soot build up in the exhaust. It's quite profound on these aircraft so and then just make sure I get plenty around the base and then just paint the rest of the exhaust port as it sits on the sprue we won't we will actually be coloring this because originally the aircraft will have had um, steel uh, exhausts which would get hot uh, wet rust and uh, become all sorts of wonderful colors that uh, steel becomes when it um, gets oxidized and heated etc so we can really go to town on that if we feel the need so that's that done and now we can just some black down onto the engine and these little um, 
these little runners either side of the the engine as well or the engine top um, which are the channels that uh, ensure that the rounds from the machine guns don't uh, hit the engine at, at any point and sort of create a little trough for the uh, the rounds to uh, go through should any misfire or that sort of thing so this is quite intricate so it's um, you've got to be quite thorough with getting the color the black into all of the nooks and crannies now there are a few tiny little bits on this engine that are a different color than just sort of black or silvered black um, and we can pick those out at a later date once this has dried so you can be fairly generous with the paint just so it flows and being acrylic it's uh, it's a good dark pigment and it's obviously washable with water but once it's dried it's dry so it's not going anywhere right I think I think we're just about there I don't need to oh, down the side of that trough there we go all the way down that was still very much unpainted so there we go we'll just let that dry shouldn't take too long and uh, we can come back to that and start detailing it So while that is drying off, um, we can continue with the assembly of our hatch. I'll just put the painting parts, tools, etc. to one side. Let me put those over there to dry. Check hands for any wet paint so we don't get it onto the parts. And then let's just start shaping. So as I said, the, the sort of shape that we're looking for is much akin to the shape that you find around that nose, built up nose part. So it, um, it smooths out towards the end here, towards the back, because that's, that's the shape we're looking for there. So it goes from this rather smooth curve at the back to the sort of two main curves at the front, like so. Fortunately, the um, the ink that's laid down onto the uh, the foam is um, it does have a, a flex and a stretch, so you were able to do this without it uh, without it cracking um, which is quite fortunate really makes this whole build process of micro races kits a, uh, a lot more satisfying and fraught with less danger of uh, sort of destroying the, the final look of the piece or the aircraft so anyway I think we've got some good shape in there certainly enough that the glue will now easily retain the uh, the parts so what I'm going to do I'm going to glue that rear part on first like so but before I do I'm going to pop that magnet in so let's just grab one of our magnets I've got a whole stash here with various metal parts attached to them as well 
Um, not deliberately, they've just picked up on the way. And of course, we need to orient this so that it actually attracts to the other magnet on the fuselage. So if I grab the fuselage, I should be able to very easily just pop the, the magnet on there. You can see it just sitting on there at the moment. And uh, what I can do is if I grab the sticker that goes on there, we can actually use that as a way of retaining the magnet when it goes in. So let's just pop our S3 sticker over there. And therefore we have a nice, nice sticky uh, part to drop that magnet into, but we need to drop it in the right way. So um, that's how the, uh, the the part is going to be oriented when it's on the hatch. Um, so that is what's going to be coming up against this part here. So the magnet that we see in that orientation needs to be sitting in the same orientation within that hole there. So what I can do is just remove the magnet like so and if I just swap it over to the other side and then just drop it in there pull it through from the other side I can if I there you go, I'll pull it through from the other side by just add, just popping something metallic against it and obviously then pulls hard against the magnet which then sticks to that sticker and I can just check we've got that right. By popping that on there, yes, that stays in place. So we've got that correct. What I'm going to do, just add a little more glue to this side. And that'll just retain it in place. Get rid of some of the excess, there we go. back a safe place and we can now fit that part to here so we're going to use the qualities of the um, the foam to foam the basically the qualities when it's dry Just going to add a reasonable amount of glue because we're gluing both sides. So, and what I'll do is pop this up to where it's supposed to be sitting, like so, and that transfers some of the glue over. And then we can remove that, let it dry, and then we can bring them together once that's dry. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is just the um, the tabs here. I'm going to bend them in slightly so that when the hatch goes on they fall within the side walls of the fuselage itself so I'll just bend those two in and then this one's a single one so I'll just bend that in you can see like so see those bent in like that these ones shouldn't need that because they will be facing directly downwards anyway. But these others, um, they'll just need a little more encouragement. So let the glue dry there. And what I'll do is we can introduce this to the, the nose part as well. Now we want this to go on evenly. There isn't actually an indicator as to um, where it's supposed to be positioned but what we want is an even amount of material going down either side so um, the easiest way to judge that is these little spikes here um, if we get a, an even amount of spike down uh, po poking out either side then we know we've got it in the right place so let's add some glue to the edge here A 
I didn't want to go all the way down onto that spike, so I'll just remove that. And I'm actually going to, rather than transfer the glue, I'm going to actually add some more glue here, just to try and increase the level of bond that we get. Then we will let both of those parts dry off for probably 15 minutes um, and then come back and assemble it all together. Right, let's pop our rearmost shaper into position. There we go. It's looking good. And the glue's taken nicely. Okay, now the more scary part. <laughs> this front portion here. It might be worth just sort of, if you do get them lined up nicely whilst dry fitting, is just put a little mark on the probably the edge of the front of this part, especially if you're um, if you're installing the um, 3D printed parts, because this this area here is going to be removed anyway, so. Wouldn't matter. So. so it's just a matter of Getting the glue to hold as we fold the sides down here. Now you can actually put additional um, pressure and shape on the internals here just to uh, assist with that. And of course the other thing we can do is uh, you could pop a little bit of tape on there um, to let it or hold it whilst it actually completely dries off. So let's let's do that. So I've got my, some of my fairly low tack. This is sort of a, a Tamiya masking tape. But, uh, let's pop that some on there, and hopefully that'll take us all the way over to this side as well. There we go. And then we can just manipulate as required just to make sure. There we go. So we can also do a bit of a check whilst we're here, just to make sure that everything comes together nicely. It's not looking too bad. Hmm. 
yeah there we go so when I'm ready what I'm going to do just because the, um, the the plastic is sitting out a little bit I can just maneuver this plastic in slightly um, but uh, but that sits very nicely onto the uh, onto the fuselage as it is so I'm very happy with that and um, if I have any green paint I might just uh, print the edge there or uh, paint the edge there I should say so right we'll let that dry off and then we'll come back and start the process of fitting the uh, 3d printed motor and uh, the uh, and the exhaust after we finish painting them so I've brought on my paints again I've got some um, aluminium uh, silver here uh, which is an acrylic paint still and I'm just gonna I've given it a good shake so hopefully it's uh, it's all good so there we go and we're going to start with the uh, the engine itself um, the, the channels either side that I mentioned before uh, for protecting the engine from the um, from any stray uh, bullets um, I'm going to give them a bit of a, a wash of this this uh, silvery aluminium but I don't want it to be um, a sort of a solid color I want them to have some texture and uh, so I'm going to sort of do a a modest dry brush which is basically just put a little bit on the uh, on the brush and uh, just apply it to those channels so I've done a little bit at the top there you can see it's probably silvered a little bit but it still looks sort of part worn and I'm just going to do the same on the outside of it too so it already looks a bit weathered now if you want it to look more pristine of course you can do it a more solid color or use more more of the silver paint on it side two I'm also obviously getting a little bit of the engine as I do this um, which isn't which isn't too, too bad a thing um, it's just getting a light dusting so we're not getting rid of that, um, that black base coat um, it's just acting as a sort of a, a shadow effect, if you like. So what I'm going to do with the rest is um, I just just keep going with the dry brushing seeing as my um, my brush now has very little silver on but just going to keep going careful with the the sticky up bits um, that you that you've got on the uh, on the engine because uh, they can uh, they you can snap them off if you hit them too hard so just be a little bit careful there but what this does is it just picks up all those little rivets and the springs 
and captures all of that. going to try and even up. It's a little bit patchy in the uh, sides here. I'm just going to try and even up the colour a bit more. Right. Just get a little bit of that black paint that's still sitting around, get that involved in the process. Darken it down a bit. There we go. I'm actually going to put a solid colour along there. Let's just darken it down a bit more. That's better. Just maybe a little along the edge there. Now I'm obviously blocking in a bit of a solid colour. I wasn't particularly happy with the patchiness. So uh, I think that's probably going to look better. Just getting the edges. Front and back. So there we go. I think that'll probably uh, that'll probably do. We've got a couple of little details to pick up on, and that's the um, the the part at the front of the uh, motor there, and the little handle at the back. Um, and we'll pick those out when I'm happy that uh, what we've done has uh, has dried off. Um, now, as for the um, the exhaust port, I'm just going to give. The exhaust itself silver color, but what I don't want to do is paint that base around it, that lozenge shaped base. I want to leave that as as black. So I'm using the slightly darkened paint here. I think that's probably a better. Better match. Possibly get a little bit on the underside too. So this is almost a, a sort of a base coat. This is what the uh, exhaust would have looked like before it was actually um, weathered and oxidized and used. So. Right, we'll put that to one side, let that dry too. So let's pick out a little bit of detail on um, on the engine. Firstly, we are going to do that uh, little part at the front there. I must try and find out what that is. <laughs> that, that, um, that part there. It's actually um, a, a brass colour, um, so I've discovered by looking at images of... Um, wing nut wings um, model aircraft uh, obviously on the, the real thing um, I suppose there are museum pieces I could have looked at but uh, um, obviously the originals uh, are all in black and white so you can't tell what color that is but uh, I'll um, I need to, to uh, grab my brass color and we'll uh, we'll get painting so I thought I had a uh, uh, brass color but I don't so I've got some um, some rust which I'm going to use for the um, uh, for the exhaust but uh, I'm going to mix it with a little bit of the uh, of the um, yellow and see what we get Let's see if I can get a little get it towards a little bit brassy so dab on a, a bit of rust you only need a drop and let's see how that combines. 
You can use the right end of the brush, why not? Looks a bit, uh, looks a bit murky green, but um, well, we'll give it a go. See, see how it comes out. It's not too bad. So I'm just just painting that sort of collar around the column that sticks up. Trying to leave that top part silvery black. So that'll do. And while we've got the uh, the rust on our our little tray, we might as well. Have a go at the um, at the exhaust. So I'm going to I'm going to sort of rather than brush this on, I'm going to stipple it on to try and get a sort of a more realistic effect. Still got a little bit of black here, which is sort of thickened up nicely. Just mix that in a little. Just dot that over too. And also maybe um, some of the lighter stuff. So I think that's uh, that's had the desired effect. There we go. As you can see, it's a sort of a multi-coloured, rusty-looking exhaust end now so we'll um, I think we'll leave it at that now the other thing that we um, we need is a um, a little bit of a, a wooden handle at the end there so let's um, I've got some what's this dark earth so a brown so I'm going to lighten that up a little bit let's just get rid of the uh, the rust the metallic from the brush Let's just pop a little this onto our palette and see what we can do with it. So it's a, as it, it suggests on the uh, the bottle, it's a little bit earthy at the moment, so we might need a little bit of yellow, maybe a little bit of red too. Here we go. Oh, we managed to get some some black in there as well. I think we may need a little more uh, more of the yellow. I don't know about you, but I find this quite fun mixing colours. It's very uh, very childish. <laughs> Takes me back. Way, way back. So that's quite light now. Let's bring in a little more red, a little more. So that, that, that looks all right. We'll go with that. So 
I've got quite a lot on my brush now, so I'm just going to be very careful with how I apply it. Just on that little handle that sticks up there, as you can see. There we go. And that brass is looking pretty good now as well at the front. I quite like that. That's good. He's got a little metallic sheen to it as well. So, okay, we'll let those dry off. So we, we've essentially done our painting now for the, uh, um, for the 3D parts. Um, so I can clear that out, wipe the brush off, and we can move on. So what we're going to do now, this is all very much part of the uh, upgrade of the 3D part. So if you are actually upgrading an existing uh, Fokker D7, um, obviously you're going to have your covering, your, uh, your sticker over the front there. I'm going to leave it off for this one because we're in the middle of the build and it's, it makes it easier. Um, but essentially what we need to do is remove some of the material that we have on the, uh, the the top of the part here. So we've got to remove some of this one mil. Um, and the engine is essentially going to sit where this graphic is at the moment, but it will extend all the way back to the back there. So we just need to remove a strip um, from, the, uh, from this part here, just, and then just leaving these two side bits. Um, before we do that though, um, the lozenge area that you can see here that has the slot for the two dimensional exhaust port that comes out of there, um, we can remove that too. So using a good sharp knife, we just run around the, um, the, the graphic itself And obviously you may have some glue on the other side sticking it down to the, um, the, the plastic. But um, we'll, uh, we'll lever all of that off. If you find it sticking too much then you can use a little bit of lighter fluid to, uh, to loosen it up but it um, shouldn't be necessary. So this lozenge shape should match the um, the bottom part of the exhaust stub on the 3D printed parts. So I think we're there now. Let me just check that side. Oh, we still haven't gone through. That's better. We're getting there. Out. There we go. Tidying it up a little bit. Yeah, but leave the plastic on the inside because that sort of acts as a uh, platform on which the uh, um, that base can rest. It gives us a good gauge of where it's supposed to sit. So the other part is obviously uh, cutting down these lines as well, the, where these graphics are, and. Uh, just removing that center part. Now I am going to, rather than freehand it, I'm actually going to use a rule, a straight edge, and go all the way from front to back. Same on the other side. There we 
go. So we can now try to remove that. It might come off in a number of different parts, but uh, as long as we create the channel, that's what's uh, that's what's important. So it's lifting off okay. We don't need to save this part, so if it does buckle and bend, then it's not a problem. It's going to go in the bin anyway. So we've got a few little bits of foam left where it's split a bit. So we just take that off. And obviously what we've done is exposed the lattice below which stays don't cut through that so now that is ready to accept both the engine part and the exhaust stub as well so now Let's remove our parts from their carrying material. So you can use little snips to do this. Um, I think I probably have some, but I also think they're probably not here, but they're in the office. So I'm going to use this method. worth taking your time over this so that you don't bust anything. The ones underneath here aren't too important but there are a few that just come up to some of the more delicate parts and it's worth just very gently making sure that they come loose. off I'm just going to give it a just a very mild sanding on the underside there we go so this now should fit with the the brass part facing forward that should fit in the little slot that we've cut So mine actually needs a little bit more cut out. So we'll do that. I'll actually use this as a way of marking where it needs to be cut. There we go. So, oh, that's almost like a, a millimeter material. So let's get the straight edge. And I can be a little bit brutal with it. There we go. Hopefully that'll come away relatively easy. Or not. It looks like my knife is blunt. Let's turn to the second knife I have, which hopefully is a bit sharper.
So now let's just so that sits in there. Yep, perfect there. That's great. So I'm not actually going to stick that in place just yet um, because I want to get our um, sticker on the front. Um, but what we can do is pop our little exhaust stub just carefully removing those little support arms that are on the underside of the uh, exhaust. into that little lozenge area right there. Perfect, perfect fit. So let's just pop a little bit of glue into that area. Oh, haha, my super nozzle has come off. Didn't even notice that. It's the first time that's happened. <laughs> Lose the super nose. Go. So we can now pop that into place. There it can just sit. And cure. Just notice a little bit of glue squidge out, so let's just get rid of that. And we'll go and get our stickers to adorn the front of that n nose hatch. Right, and also let's get rid of all of these little bits of stuff. So, S26 and S25, what does it suggest in the manual, goes first, I can't remember, um, S25 first, of course. So that should sit nicely onto that curved part at the front there, like so. And then the other part should fold down onto the area below. And we use a little bit of pressure. I could use the the ball tool actually, couldn't I? In this scenario, let's do that. do is I'm going to put a little bit of a cut in here, a bit of a, um, a dart. Well, oh, because this is being covered over anyway, it just might help it 
fold. Maintain that curve on the edge, like so. So it um, it occurred quite naturally on the other side, but of course it's folded over, so you've got three thicknesses of uh, of sticker. So let's just take a little dart out there. worked well. Let's just press those stickers down. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Let us grab the S26. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to put a little layer of glue over the base of where the um, magnets are. And this actually adds a, a little extra layer of stick so that the, um, the sticker adheres really nicely to the, uh, the whole thing. Okay, now let's get our S26. We're going to line that up, the semicircular cutout there for the prop. Line that up with the semicircular there for the prop. Hopefully, that will line everything else up for us. So we'll let that glue dry there and then fold these back over. Actually going to do a little bit of uh, trimming as well with this sticker, just so that it conforms to the sides of our hatch. Just bring that down there. The other side too. There we go. So just let the uh, the glue dry, and then we'll fold that all over. So I've given it a couple of minutes, and um, we can now fold these down. What you'll notice is that there is a little bit of fettling that we have to do once again with this sticker to make it conform. I'm just going to. Take a little bit off here at the corner um, that's not going to fold, fold too well because there's parts in the way. And then just trim so that it forms a little tab that neatly sits on the reverse of our little nose stack. Like so. That's my ball tool. There we go. We can bring those stickers down nicely onto the surface. There we go. 
go and same on the other side so we'll just put our little cut in there remove that from the equation try not to take off too much of the uh, other stuff go and that should fold down neatly like so and obviously nicely retain those magnets that are within capturing them so that um, they don't pull out under use just a little bit of trim up that's it fantastic so there we have our sort of little mock radiator on the front as well. Just make sure everything is very well stuck down. Perfect. Right. We can now pop our uh, engine in place. Like so. So it's just a matter of sticking it onto the lattice underneath. Don't forget the brass bit up front. there we go it's all on we've got a lovely 3d very scale like hatch fantastic mm -hmm.